Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord God called out to Moses from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the descendants of Jacob, the people of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I brought you to myself and carried you on eagle's wings. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the nations of the earth. About six or seven years ago, a lovely member of the congregation bought for the office one of those Keurig single cup coffee makers. How many people here have one either at home or at work that they have access to? Look at that, that's a lot of people. Those are lovely, lovely, lovely coffee makers because you get these little individual cups of coffee and you can make your coffee in just one cup and not have to make a whole pot for anybody. Now along with the Keurig maker comes uh, sometimes a box of, of little samples of their coffee. One of them that you can throw in the trash can is called chai latte. <laughs> That is the biggest, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But anyway, they tried, and I'm sure there's some people in this world that, that like that kind of stuff, but to me it tastes awful. I'd like to meet the person that invented it. I bet your face looks like this. <laughs> anyway, this week we had a terrible misfortune in the office. Our Keurig coffee maker passed away. It was a pleasant death. It was okay because the curry coffee maker had lasted about six or seven years and served us well. But since we all got really used to it, we just couldn't live without it. So I told Nicole, I said, Nicole, I'm going to be a little bit late tomorrow morning. I'm going to go buy us a new curry single cup coffee maker. But since I'm spending your money and using your credit card, I wanted to be a good steward with the administrative budget that we have. So I went on the internet to find out who had the cheapest price on the Keurig single cup coffee makers. Well, I went on the internet and guess who won? Coles. <laughs> Every day they have a one day sale. And they were having, isn't that true, Joe? That's every day. So they were having a one-day sale on these Curie single cup coffee makers. They're usually about $149.95. Well, they had it on sale for $119.95. And I had a $20 coupon. So I took the $20 coupon and I went to Kohl's and there was the Curry single cup coffee maker there on one day sale now, just one day only, for $119.95. Well, I get up to the check and check, uh, checkout place, the, 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 whatever they call it, and uh, hand the woman the Holy Trinity credit card. And she said, if you use your Kohl's credit card, you might can get an even bigger discount. You can also participate in the scratch-off that we have here. <laughs> well, I didn't know whether the scratch-off was a competition in itching or what, so <laughs> I said, what is a scratch-off? And she, I said, do I have to pay anything for it? She said, no, we have these coupons up here, and each customer can scratch it off and see what kind of a discount they get. I never win anything, but... When I scratched off my scratch-off thing, it was an additional 30%. I yelled and screamed and hollered. And the manager comes over and he says, sir, is there a problem? I said, not at all. I said, I just got 30% off. And he said, keep it down. I said, well, I'm a preacher. And he said, I don't care. But anyway, I ended up getting a... Keurig single cup coffee maker, Joe, for listen to this, $67. Yes! Hey, I saved us about 50%. So I'm taking good care of our administrative budget. I love these Keurig coffee makers. 
But what is really special about them is they give an excellent owner's manual because they want you to get the most enjoyment and life and benefit out of your new coffee maker on the first page. The very first page, it says, uh, it has 22 commandments, excuse me, 22 <laughs> instructions for safe operation and use. And every one of them is not meant to be a burden, but it's their way of saying, we want you to get the most out of this coffee maker. And this is the funniest one here. It says, when you get your new <laughs> coffee maker, do not place it on or near a hot gas or electric burner or in a heated oven. <laughs> Hello? I wonder if there was some bonehead that put their coffee maker in a heated oven. Oh my gosh. But anyway, it says, do not do this, do not do that, and all that kind of stuff. And then at the back, it says, and if you have any problems with it, they have a section that says, whatever the situation is that you're having a problem with, and then right next to it, they give you the solution. And I'm proud of Curry because they want us as a church staff to get many long years out of our coffee maker and for us to enjoy it. Now, the reason God came down from heaven and gave to Moses to give to the Israelites the Ten Commandments is not for us to have them as a burden, but to teach us how to get the most out of His kingdom and the most out of our relationship with Him and our brothers and sisters as human beings. So for the next several weeks, Pastor Burkholz and I will be going over each and every commandment, one by one, so that we can refresh our memory as to how important these commandments are and how we are to look at them, review them, and use them so that we can get the most out of life. Several uh, uh, months ago, Aaron and Meg bought their first house. And I thought, what a nice housewarming gift I can take them but get them a, a lawnmower. So I went to Lowe's and I, I bought a Troy built push lawnmower. It was a really, really good lawnmower. But how embarrassed I was when I got to Aaron's house and I saw how big his lot was. <laughs> I said, Aaron, this is your housewarming gift, but it's just for trimming. <laughs> I said, what we're going to do is I want you to find a riding lawnmower. I'll pay for it, but whatever, get a good riding lawnmower so that you can mow your grass. So Aaron is kind of like his dad. He wants to be a good steward with the money that he has. And so we went on Craigslist and all this kind of stuff, and he found a great used lawnmower. It's by Huska something, Barney, whatever. Who would have a name like that, Joe? Dead gummit anyway. If I had a name like Huska Barney, I'd change it to Grunky. But anyway, it was a great lawnmower, but about the second time he used it, he got a flat tire, which can happen. So being the person that he is, he takes the flat tire off, takes it into a lawnmower dealer, and the dealer gives him a, a new tire and puts it on there for him. And he takes it back, puts the tire back on his lawnmower, starts the lawnmower up, it runs perfectly, but the blade wouldn't turn. So Aaron called the guy that he got it from. He says, what the heck is going on with this? I'm sure he said, heck. I said, what the heck is going on with this? And the guy said, did you take the wheel off yourself? He said, yeah. He said, was there a pin in, in the wheel that you took off? He said, yeah, I didn't know where that went, so it's sitting in the shed. He said, well, that pin has to go back in there because it will tell, you, it will tell the lawnmower when the blade is disengaged or when it needs to be engaged. And so Aaron takes the wheel off, puts the pin back in there, and it works. My point in all this is, when you don't have instructions, things can go really, really bad. Things won't work. And so what God does with all of these commandments is give us these commandments 
I'll say it again, not to be a burden to us, but to help us get through life and to have a great relationship with him and with one another. Now, you've known me now for a long time. When I came here, Tom, you were just a kid. I think you were still in high school. And y'all weren't even married yet. So. But I've been here long enough to, for you to know me. What do you think of those Ten Commandments? I would say was the most important. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Every preacher, that's their favorite commandment. Because we are trying to tell you that coming to the house of the Lord on a regular basis is our way of becoming intimately involved in God's manual for a good relationship with one another and a good relationship with Him. Just think how much life would be better if we all took those commandments seriously. So for the next three or four weeks, we're going to go over them and we're going to refresh our memory about how important it is to have a manual and to follow it. Amen. Let us stand.